Mr. Ivy know the show must go on In far Cincinnati, man, I put on Tunes made another flame beat for me to cook on Raised arms, close fist, yeah, too strong Team N.I., chop it up at the chop shop Top notch with the king flow, the hot shot Cops watching, listen to the real Jumping like hopscotch, nobody harder than Oh, no, think not Not only citywide but nationwide, uh, superlative, keep it locked like the Haitian guys. Uh, Put the truth in the airways, we talk about it. Uh, Brand new like the tip plates, let's be about it. Uh, Who got the info by the AO? Johnno be the rapper, got them jamming when they play him. Like Staying in my lane, they ain't gotta okay him. Yeah, Who the host with the scoop? Yeah, they gon' say him. Ooh. Ivy, so superlative like a bag of drippos. Show you where the bricks at, Cincinnati Red Tag. One time with my people at. Team N.I. where my people at? It's the 513, yeah, you know the flow. What's the word, Nate? Let them know the show. One time where my people at? Team N.I. where my people at? My people at? Welcome back to the program. If I see further, it's only because I stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before me. Good morning, everyone. Today's show is brought to you by the First Lady's Health Fair Day. That's coming up this Sunday. That's October the 13th. 12 locations, free health screenings for you and your family. For you and your family. If you live here in Cincinnati, in the Hamilton County area, there are 12 locations. They all go down on one day. That's this Sunday. Your health matters because your health is your wealth. So please attend the Family Health Day of free Cincinnati Health Screenings. Now, this is the fifth year they've been doing it. Shout out to the First Ladies for Health. Again, this is a one-day health fair at 12 locations. Anyone can visit any of the locations. You don't have to go to the one that's just in your neighborhood. You can visit any of the locations. Good morning to you. Insured, uninsured persons with any pre-existing condition can visit a participating location and receive confidential testing. Speaking of confidential testing, HIV is on the rise here in Hamilton County. And at the First Ladies Health Fair coming up this Sunday, that's October the 13th, you can get a confidential HIV screening. If you're sexually active and with multiple partners, you're not using protection. Hell, if you really, even if you are, you should know your status. Good morning. Welcome back. This is the Nathan Ivy Show. Good morning, everybody. Let's get into it. 513-873-7134. We have a lot to talk about. Number one, what the hell is wrong with Amy Murray? Tamaya Denard speaks. So yesterday, two big things happened at city council. We should talk about both of them. One, city council passed a 7-1 vote to discriminate or to ban discrimination in the workplace here in the city. Uh, when it comes to natural hairstyles, natural hairstyles, we're talking about black women, black folks, people, non-white folks, the way your hair just grows out of your head. I was watching, uh, I'm not sure what it was. I just caught a news clip on the internet and they were talking with two sisters who both have natural hair here in the city of Cincinnati. One of them said something that stuck with me. She said, well, why should we be penalized for the way that our hair grows naturally out of our skull. Yeah. 7-1. The one person who voted against it was Amy Murray, which begs the question that I asked you when I 
started the broadcast this morning. What the hell is wrong with Amy Murray? I saw the news clip. She's talking about, oh, there's already laws on the books. What? Huh? Huh? It sounds like a damn dinosaur. I thought the dinosaurs were extinct. We've got one on city council. This prehistoric thinking. That sounds like some old Republican ideology. Some that's like that sounds like somebody somebody said when they were talking about passing the civil rights bill, right? You go back in history, I guarantee you'll find somebody who says, We already got laws on the books. That's what Amy Murray said about it. Talk about clueless. Who the hell voted her on council? You, not me. Certainly not me. What is she talking about? She needs to get a book. (laughs) Somebody needs to give her some literature. Because Amy Murray is uh, behind the times. And Council Member Chris Silbach called her out. He said, you know what? I think you're privileged. Yeah. It's not something that that Amy Murray even has to think about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Ready for it. You must discuss. And then Tamaya Denard goes on Facebook. Here's the other side of it. And she says, you know what? Yesterday, as in yesterday, was uh, Wednesday, was kind of a mixed thing. You know, I guess it was a good day. You know, on one hand, you got that 7-1 measure to ban discrimination based on hairstyles. But on the other hand, she writes, I brought forth legislation to no longer run our human services dollars through the United Way of Greater Cincinnati. Now, hmm, stop for a second. We'd almost forgot about this. Remember when the brother came from out of town to run the United Way? And he was ran out of town by the AKA white woman mafia that was running things over the United Way? Oh, yeah, I remember all of it. Brother came in, it was a big thing. Oh, the diversion, the largest nonprofit in the city. They're getting a brother to run it. And then he ain't had no say so. He ain't had no power. He was basically. You know, just a figurehead. Remember this? And there was an outcry about it, and the United Way is going to have to diversify, which have they diversified? The only thing that the United Way did is they went on to their website and they took down the pictures of the people who are their leadership. I think they did that so that when you go there, you can't easily see how diverse or diverse that the, the leadership at the United Way really is. I mean, for years and years and years, you go to the United Way website, they had leadership was one of the, the things you could click on. You click on that, you go to the page, and it's the entire executive staff. And they had a photograph of them smiling at you, and then a little blurb about what their job responsibility was. They took that out. They took that out after the brother was run out of town by the white woman mafia. They ran this man straight out of town. And as a response to that, people start digging and digging and asking questions. And one of the questions that came up is because of what appears to be a serious lack of diversity and appreciation for diversity and perhaps even a volatile and racially hostile work environment, which is what the brother said. It's what the black man said, who, by the way, has lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he's been back to his old job. He said, screw Cincinnati. I'm going back to my old job. They still want me. And he said it was basically a hostile workplace where he couldn't do anything. But these, but the United Way is charged by the city to disseminate uh, tax dollars to, to various nonprofits to make that decision. So there was a big question mark about whether the United Way should still have that position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what this vote was about. So, uh, to me, that is equally as interesting to me. And I think that vote was 4-4. To me, that vote says something. That's very interesting right there. I'd like to know. She writes, uh, on the other hand, I brought forth legislation to no longer run or our human services dollars through the United Way of Greater Cincinnati. My legislation doesn't mean I don't think the United Way of Greater Cincinnati has caring people or staff who want to do the right thing. It doesn't mean that people who run the United Way of Greater Cincinnati are bad people. It doesn't mean I think the United Way of Greater Cincinnati is a bad organization. Now, see, this is that Cincinnati polite, right? I have these caveats. Or maybe this is what you got to do as a politician. 
She don't have to add those caveats for me. Just because you believe, especially in the wake of this brother being ran out of town as a CEO, in the wake of that, it is completely legitimate to question whether United Way of Greater Cincinnati should still be in that position with the city of Cincinnati. Yeah. Just saying. I mean, at some point, we got to be looking at these nonprofits and ask ourselves, are they moving as efficiently as they can be to address the needs of what they say is their constituents, the people they're trying to serve? Because I've heard some horror stories, man. I've heard some horror stories. Very, very interesting. You got all these nonprofits, and with a lot of them, you go to the top, you're going to see the, the people they serve are non-white people, by and large. But the, the higher you go up in many of them, it's, it's like the mountains. It gets whiter and whiter, more and more snow. Right? Informa. Oh, that's a 90s reference. Hopefully you got it. Um, let me see here. Look, tomorrow is, I, mean, I got a bunch of tickets to this Michael Jackson tribute tomorrow at Bogart's. And quit fronting like you don't like Michael Jackson. If you're interested, let me know. Back to, uh, I'm on Tamaya Denar's Facebook page right now. Right now, just kind of looking at this and what she had to say. She writes, it does mean that as Cincinnati is becoming a renaissance city for many people, others are left behind. It means that I don't believe we can continue to do things the same way and expect different results. It means I believe more black-led organizations need to be funded to do the work in black communities. How is she wrong? How is she wrong? Hmm, you tell me. P- ponder a second. This is the Nathan Ivy Show, live, local, and vocal, broadcasting live from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio, powered by Sin Digital Media, a new urban voice in the city of Cincinnati. Let me see here. Uh, we can't be afraid to take bold steps to bring change to people who need it most. I'm not interested in preserving the status quo or to not hurt people's feelings. Uh. She writes, some people in leadership at the city of Cincinnati don't have true proximity to the challenges our communities face. They still subscribe to trickle down economics. It's been proven time and time again that it doesn't work. Well, if trickle down economics doesn't work, then trickle down taxpayer dollars to nonprofits that are run by non black people, but the majority of the constituents are black people, people of color, non white folks. Listen, this is the first time this came up. People keep talking about this, but this was the vote. This was the big vote. Like, are we going to continue with the status quo when it comes to how do we, um, you know, who who decides what nonprofits are going to get the dollars? What has the United Way done to deserve that? Oh, I know. They ran the brother out, had a lack of diversity in leadership, and a whole lot of other problems. Hmm, sounds like a good prescription to me. Something to think about. 513-873-7134. Or not. I'll leave it up to you. Something to think about or not. I'll leave it up to you. But uh, that those are some local issues here that uh, if you have an opinion, I'd love to get your thoughts on. Number one on the on the 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 ban on discriminating against ethnic hairstyles or natural hairstyles, which is ridiculous because natural hairstyles are healthier. And then second, Tamaya Denard's, uh, her, her proposal was shot down by city council. It lost 4-4. Now, I need to know who were the four that were for it and who were the four that were against it? And the four that were against it need to be asked some questions. Number one, three letters. Why? Why? And listen, it could be that the United Way is the best disseminator of that particular program. Could be. I ain't heard it, though. I have not heard it. Tamaya Denar seems unconvinced. 
to say the least. She writes again, there's a direct correlation between time and value. For weeks, we debated a music venue. venue. Meanwhile, we pushed the issues that impact the underserved, the undeserved, I'm sorry, the underserved and marginalized through as fast as humanly possible. My legislation lost 4-4. Do y'all think my colleagues care about poverty in our city? Of course they do. Are they willing to be bold and stand up to many who make money off the impoverished? Question mark. She says, stand up to those who are making money off the impoverished within the same context of talking about the United Way of Greater Cincinnati. Huh. Quite interesting. So who, let me go to United Way right now. United Way of Greater Cincinnati. I'm typing that in right now. Good morning to you. You want to join the show 513 513- Eight seven three seven one three four. I'm chasing a couple of interviews. A couple of interviews. Uh, I don't really want to say anything until I get some confirmation, uh, both local and national. Put it that way. So I'm on United Way's website right now. Let's see, I click on About Us at the top. I used to go to the website all the time, so I'm very aware of it. Now it's, it reads Leadership on the left hand side. Maybe they changed it. Maybe they put the photographs back up. Uh, but no, they did not. And again, my question is, why did they take the photographs down of the executive team right after everybody was questioning how diverse the executive team really is? Last black person I saw on there, and they might have changed now, was Yvonne Gray. When she left, there was no diversity. There was no non-white folks on the executive staff of the United Way, and something tells me that the vast majority of people they service are non-white. So they think they slick, huh? Oh, we'll take the photographs down. People don't know. I don't know. Maybe things have changed. Maybe maybe I'm... I said they got a new VP, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I told you somebody was going to get a job. What did I tell you? I told you somebody was going to get a VP job because that's how shit works in this city. Jennifer Ingram. I think she is a sister. She's the VP of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's a new VP position. They didn't have that as a VP position a few years ago. So maybe they got a new VP position. I'm sure that the VP of diversity, equity, and inclusion is a person of color. I'm sure, right? Jennifer Ingram. But I don't. I don't know that name. Maybe you do. You might know her. Cincinnati's a small place. It, Ross Meyer, non-black. Mike Baker, I don't know. He's the interim lead of Community Impact. But see, we all see this shit coming. Everybody knew that Ross Meyer, who was the former VP of Community Impact, was going to step up and, and be the new CEO. We all knew that. Who didn't know that? I said it here on the air. I mean, you know, you live in Cincinnati long enough, you know how this shit, you know how this stuff falls down. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's an idiot. We're not dumb. You can't pull a wool over our eyes. We see what you're doing. Meet our new chief marketing and engagement officer. Okay, let me get a little tab over here. Let me click on here. Oh, the new PR community engagement is a non-black person. Sure, his name is Brian McClearly. McCleary. I'm sure he's great. I'm sure he's great. So, I don't know. I'm not sure how much more, um, you know, how many more raisins in the buttermilk they got up there. Not so sure. Hmm. Huh. But I think it's very interesting. He took the photographs down. Very interesting. Because Why? Maybe they was getting too much like, hey, aren't you uh, such and such? Like, damn it. My photograph's up on the website. I don't know, man. The United Way of Cincinnati, in my opinion, I should be able to see who the executive team is. I should be able to see a photograph of who they are. I should be able to be out in the community and say, hey, hey, aren't you Ross Meyer? Man, the last CEO of the the Greater Cincinnati uh, United Way, this man was making like $400,000 a year. Y'all, he was raking in the cash. 
raking in the cash. How is that nonprofit you making uh, uh, six figures, mid mid six figures? That's for profit. Huh. You see Mike Baker, Holly N, Jennifer Ingram, Lashia Lyman, BP Success by Six in Area Communities. That sounds, that sounds like a sister. Let me see here. I don't know that name. I'm Googling shit here. Sorry. Um, let me see here. Haste. Oh, it's, it's not what I'm trying to do, Nate. Get it together, B. Try this again. Uh, copy. Can't even copy and paste these days, man. It's sad. I'm just curious, man. I'm on one this morning. I'm just curious. Very, very curious. Tamari Denar's flow has me curious. Uh, let me see here. Oh. Oh, no, I'm not coming. Come. I'm on LinkedIn. I ain't come up with nothing yet. Maybe you can help me. Cincinnati's a small place. see one two three four five six seven eight i think they've added to their executive team as well i don't remember there being that many people there but quite interesting i think to my denard has a really interesting point and i'm very curious to see which were the four members of city council that voted against her legislation why should we continue to run human services dollars through the united way of greater cincinnati I mean, I know we've always done it that way or it's been that way as long as I can remember or had knowledge of it. But it should it continue to be that way. I don't know. You tell me. 513-873-7134. Uh, remember Matt Lauer used to be on TV? He was the man on NBC, the Today Show, man. He had guts. But he also had what appears to be a dark, sinister side as well. Now we're finding out why he got fired so abruptly. It's because a staffer came forward and said, if you go back to the Olympics in Sochi, she was raped by Matt Lauer back in 2014 at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Remember that? She remains anonymous, but that was the reason why Matt Lauer was taken off the air so quickly. The hell? Matt Lauer was a creep? Why isn't he in jail? <laughs> he should go to jail. That's what should happen. 513-873-7134. Thank you for being here. So yesterday I was over at, um, I guess that's the Inquirer building. Yeah, it was at the Inquirer building. That's where they had the meeting for the Black Journalist Association here in Cincinnati, Greater Cincinnati Black Journalists, NABJ. And a shout out to Alexis. Shout out to uh, Ashley from Ask Askley. She was the, uh, Ashley, she is the moderator. And uh, there was a nice little turnout. Um, and the other panelists I thought did great. You know that podcast? The It's called Accused. Yeah, yeah. I got a chance to talk to one of the producers. and She said some stuff that blew my mind. She said some stuff that blew my mind. You know, the number one thing that comes up with a lot of people in podcasting is how do you monetize it? That comes up over and over and over and over again. How do you monetize it? And it's, it's a multitude of different ways. A multitude of different ways. So that question came up. Uh, you know, basically it was just how do you do it and, 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 and how do you get started? And the world is just so different these days. You can create media via your phone just like that. You can take videos. There are apps that you can use that will give you polish to your videos. You can go Facebook Live. Your phone has a microphone in it, but you can buy attachments that will uh, give you a better sound. But overall, I thought it was a it was a really good time. I'm I'm always here to answer questions. I'm always here. I'm all about that. I help. I don't mind. Not one bit. It was a good time, though. I think they do great work, and they're expanding as well. They're expanding. Speaking of the uh, Greater Cincinnati Black Journalists, they're expanding. Uh, shout out to uh, Six. Shout out to um, Renee. Shout out to Renee was there. Um, see, I know she does some stuff on YouTube. Um, but we had an interesting conversation. So I'm speaking with her name is Amanda and the accused podcast is a very, very, very popular podcast. I don't know any, how many plays they got, but I would have to say probably into the millions. 
And uh, we had a really interesting conversation. I got a chance to see the uh, Inquirer's podcast room, which was interesting, where they actually tape it. Ran into uh, Gina Ruffin Moore. Yeah, it was good to see Gina. Um, and uh, made some new friends. Uh, shout out to Lawrence Kane. My brother was on the panel as well, talking about his podcast. And uh, it was quite interesting. You know, I would say overall, I had a good time. I'm a bit under the weather, though. I'm still a little under the weather myself right now. Last couple of days, man, sometimes things just hit you. Never can tell. I have kids. Sometimes they can pass things to you. I see my son. First thing he wants to do is run and give me a big hug. Oh, my God. He just wants to slather me with all his little four-year-old cooties from all the kids that's there. I'm telling you, man. Little boy. Oh, kids are something. But do any of those names sound familiar to you? I'm looking at the leadership here of the United Way. Ross Meyer, Mike Baker, Holly End, Jennifer Ingram, Leisha Lyman, Brian McClearly, Don Reynolds, um, Charles Wright. Those are the interim lead finance. Okay. So they've got four interim positions. So it looks like some people left. Hey, maybe they're changing things. And, you know, what's so funny is that I'm on their website right now. They got this thing called Investing in Black-Led Ideas. Okay, well, if you believe in it, then (laughs) maybe somebody else should maybe make a decision about how those dollars are going to be disseminated to the populace. I don't know, something to think about, but let me uh, greet the choppers. Good morning to you. What the hell is wrong with Amy Murray? Ray Wright's Grand Rising, all good to see you. Tracy Wright's high. Fame Wright's good morning. F Amy Murray, Nathan. What is wrong with Clayton Kershaw? Actually, what is wrong with Martin Luther King III? He's embarking on this new crusade, which I think is the wrong direction. Martin Luther King III, with it, which is one of Dr. Martin Luther King's children, he is launching this, this new initiative, right, that will, um, I think what he's trying to do is to get Colin Kaepernick a job back in the NFL. It's called take a, hashtag take a knee. So you go back several years, Colin Kaepernick started this, and then people start recreating it, the whole hashtag take a knee. Well, the Reverend Martin Luther King III, or Martin Luther King the Third, he's saying that people should boycott the NFL until Colin Kaepernick gets a job back. And I don't agree with that. Uh, uh, that's the wrong target. You know, him getting a job back, what the hell does that mean? Why would you even want to go back? I don't get that. People act like if Colin Kaepernick gets a job back in the NFL, then the people are going to win. No, Colin Kaepernick might win. Because he got a settlement, and then he goes back to play the game that he, you know, he wants to play. But how do the people win? I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't get it. But it is what it is. Uh, what did Clayton Kershaw do? Uh, p- please clue us in, please. Brenda writes, "Happy Tuesday." Hey, good to see you, Brenda. Renee writes, "Good morning. Thank you for your insights on podcasting one on one. Great info. Uh, very welcome, Renee. It was great to see you. Great to see you." Magnanimous King writes, good morning. Sharp writes, good morning. Bunky writes, what's up, Nate and the Choppers? Mason Marley writes, morning, Nate and the Choppers. Hashtag resistance. Hashtag impeach in the streets. Mike Davis writes, rise and shine, young stars. Pat writes, good morning. Good to see everybody. Mike Jones writes, good morning. Uh, See, Clue Magic's in the house. He writes, good morning, Nate and the Choppers. Bunky writes, the only impact our community is getting is gentrification. Uh, Tony writes a good morning. Lawrence writes to Maya is right on this. I'm glad she spoke up. If members on city council don't want to empower black on organizations, then blacks have to have the duty to vote them out. Quid pro quo. A 100%. 100% on that. I mean, just again, who are the four members of city council that voted against it and why? I'm sure they all have their reasons. I'm sure they all got answers. But are they good answers? Or is this some some bullshit? 
That didn't, you didn't hear that, did you? And you tell me, 513-873-7134. Uh, Mike Jones, if we're going to criticize closing the health gap and analyze their efficiency, their efficacy, why can't we scrutinize the ineffective United Way? Mike Jones, ding, 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 ding. Yes, exactly right. Like, I don't think that it was outside of the scope for there to be a review of the closing the health gap. I'll say the same thing today that I said back then. I think overall, the Center for Closing the Health Gap has a positive effect in our community. Do I know where every dollar is? Do I know why they have rotten bananas on that television show? No. Do not. Can't speak for that. I have no idea. But I think they're a positive impact. But I also believe that you're getting public dollars, then you're going to get scrutinized. Make sure your books are right. That's what comes with it. Anybody who's ever worked on a grant before, you've got to do reporting. You're getting city dollars, public dollars. you got to do reporting. It's just, a, it's just a part of it. If you don't want to do the reporting, if you don't want to make sure the X's and O's and everything is correct, then don't take the money. The only problem is, is that it seems like they spent so much time on the Center for Closing the Health Gap and very little time really investigating and, and, and figuring out what these other organizations are doing. Like the United Way. They act like the United Way is sacrosanct. And it's not. It's just an organization that people run. And like I told you, the last CEO was making like $400,000 a year. To do what? How do you justify that? <laughs> that's, that's, I love it. Uh, listen, it's, it's interesting. Amy Murray is a closeted racist. For her to vote against the measure which is ridiculous to have in the first place, shows she doesn't care when she says there are state and federal laws that covers this. Shows how insensitive she is um, to the plight of black folks. She couldn't care less. Let me pull up. Let's go over to City Cable together. Let's go to City Cable together. and Let's listen to what actually went down. This I, I, I start, this is what I love about City Cable, is that you can go back and you can watch it for yourself. You can see for yourself what's really going on. Okay? Nobody has to tell you anything. Um, you, you don't have to interpret anything. You can see it for yourself. All right, let's go right here. And usually what happens is, was it yesterday? Usually what they do sometimes is they'll make the audio version of it uh, available before the video. Sometimes I've seen it takes a couple days here or there. I don't know what the time frame. I don't know how to explain the time frame, but that's just what I've seen. So let's go to city council and let's listen in for ourselves and uh, I'll deliver a little commentary along the way. I'm not going to bore you with the boring stuff. I want to get straight to the drama. I want to get straight to the drama. Okay, give me one second. We'll pull it up. I mean, she just made herself seem like, like, like who is she beholden to? Is this some old white female Republican Party stuff she's got to go with? I mean, is this some of that whole Republican ideology? We got too many laws already. We don't need these other layers of laws. You know, that ideology. But to me, the little comment that I got on news when she said, we've already got protections for this. She just sounds so lost. So out of touch. Look around you. There's There's a natural hair revolution. You're talking about, well, we already got laws on the books. Uh-huh. Since when did that mean anything? <laughs> Somebody tell me that, please. Since when did that mean anything? Let me see if I can pull up this city council-ish. Four, one, in the police recruiting unit. And whereas Specialist Johnson was a school resource officer for Taft High School, a district Scotty J is retiring. the police department's Hey, shout out to Scotty J, office. man. And whereas Specialist Johnson served as a three-term president for the Sentinel Police Association from 2000 to 2006, where he worked tirelessly to bridge the gap between the police and de- 
the police department in our communities. And whereas Scotty Johnson was, was one of the police department's best SWAT negotiators from 1998 to 2012 before moving to the chief's office. And whereas C city council wishes to honor and recognize specialist Scott Johnson for his career of service and contributions he's made to, the, to Cincinnati now, therefore be it resolved by the council of the city of Cincinnati, state of Ohio, that the mayor and city council hereby recognize and honor specialist Scotty Johnson for a stellar career of service to the Cincinnati community as a member of the Cincinnati Police Department, and that this resolution be spread upon the men's of council and be copied to, and the copy be provided to you in the form of that beautiful uh, frame there, and his family and, and through our office uh, here at City Hall. I also refer to Scotty as Benjamin Buttons because he looks younger every time. I can't believe that he's actually old enough to be retired, so thank you so much for everything you've done. Like, I uh, agree with the mayor that we wish we could keep you, but we appreciate that you're also um, retiring young enough to even enjoy your retirement. So thank you for what you've done. And if uh, my colleagues will, uh, Mayor, if you could take up a vote and then we'll have you speak after this. Cool. This, is, this is not the time to bring up Roll Chief call Blackwell. Roll passage of the resolution. Councilmember Silbach? Yes. Councilmember Sittenfeld? Yes. Vice Mayor Smitherman? Yes. Councilmember Young? Yes. Councilmember Denard? Yes. Councilmember Landsman? Yes. Councilmember Mann? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Passes. Well, at least Amy Murray could agree on something. It's Scotty J, everybody. Being recognized by the city of Cincinnati yesterday. Uh, wow. Uh, to the mayor and council, um, I am uh, humbled, humbled to be recognized to this magnitude. Um, I appreciate the respect. I appreciate the, uh, the um, accolades. I really do. This was never done for accolades. This was always done from my heart to serve the citizens of Cincinnati and to serve with my colleagues that you see here. Chief Isaac, um, original partner Eric Dunn, we ran the West End together, Phil Black, who ran the beat right next to me, and just all the other officers that, were, that are here. Uh, it was a heart thing. Um, I'm just a phone call away. I mean that. Uh, I don't think I'm going too far. Uh, Cincinnati still has a lot to uh, offer, and I'm going to remain here in the city for the time being. Uh, Councilmember Denard, thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. And um, I just pray that I never cheated the citizens of Cincinnati, and I really pray that I never, ever cheated the co my colleagues on the Cincinnati Police Department. It means the world to be respected and recognized, and I thank you all, Council and the Mayor. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Scotty J, everybody. Are we, are we clapping for Scotty J? Huh? No claps? So Y'all wrong for that. Over at the Chief's uh, office to say a few words. Uh, okay, enough of that. That was Scotty J, everybody. Yeah, he's retiring at like 50. Yeah, he got drop beat. Hey, drop. Scotty J got you beat by like seven, eight years, man. That's love right there. Graduated. See, that's that's what it's all about. And hopefully we're telling our young people that. I'm teaching my daughter that she needs to come up with an honest way to make money where she can use her talents so that she can retire and live the kind of lifestyle that she wants. Not telling her to get no damn job. No. Now, that's not your end goal to get a job. I'm not sending you to college. I'm not paying for that for you to get a job. You can get a job right now. Uh, let's go back to this. The city council and yesterday. With all due respect, Ms. Murray, I think your comments and your vote come from a place of extreme privilege and are a slap in the face to African-American women who, whose stories I've heard the last several weeks are degrading, are color or certain facial features. Color discrimination involves treating someone unfavorably because of a skin color complexion. So from the federal level and state level, it's already covered under discrimination. So for that reason, I'm not going to support this local one because it's already a federal law. Oh, is that your reasoning? She said that like she really, th 
Well, you know, she was reading from something. She had her reading glasses up. You couldn't go off the dome with that one, Amy? So this is city council from yesterday debating whether they were going in and also articulating their support or their lack of support for the ban on natural hairstyles. We're going to listen to this. But then I also want to hear the conversation and the vote, the roll call on Tamaya Denard's measure. Who own businesses, that this is no longer okay, that you can no longer treat someone differently because of their hair or hairstyles. Uh, and we will become a more inclusive city that not only respects all of our residents, but values our differences and knows that that's what makes us. Now, politicians are always talking about how when you pass this, we're going to become that. Is there anything to that? Like, intellectually, let's take the emotion out of it. What's the big deal about passing a, a ban on natural hair? When, as Amy Murray accurately said, we've already got protections against discrimination. I just want to know if we all on the same page with this and how you feel about it. I want to provoke some thought. I want to provoke the conversation. That's what I am, an agent provocateur. I provoke. So hopefully somebody can give me a question and answer to this. Like, what's the big deal about this hair band? So what? Big deal. Everybody's running around like this is some, some historic thing. Uh, number one, it, discrimination is illegal. Already. We all know it. What's the big deal for this in Cincinnati? Think about it. Unique as a city. Thank you. Other comments? If not, roll call on Ma passage. Mr. Chair. Oh. Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Councilmember Murray. Yeah, thank you. So I agree that we should not have discrimination of any type. And my understanding from speaking to the legal community is hair discrimination is a form of race discrimination, which is prohibited under federal and state de decriminalization laws. So it's already on the books that you cannot discriminate against race or color. And under the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the very first paragraph says race discrimination involves treating someone unfavorably because he or she is of a certain race or because of personal characteristics associated with race, such as hair texture, skin color, or certain facial features. Color discrimination involves treating someone unfavorably because of a skin color complexion. So from the federal level and state level, it's already covered under discrimination. So for that reason, I'm not going to support this local one because it's already a federal law. Mr. Chair. Uh, Councilmember Young. Mr. Chair, I, I respect what my colleague has to say. However, um, the history of this nation is such that over and over and over again, it's been necessary to buttress laws already on the books that everybody thought would be enforced, <clears throat> but they weren't. Specifically, I, I refer to the fact that at the end of slavery, um, African Americans, newly minted citizens, if you will, were supposed to enjoy all the rights and benefits of being citizens. We all know how the history Tell played him, out Wendell. after that. And we all know that over and over again, as it's been necessary member, to... That's Councilmember Wendell Young. All kinds of laws, a Voting Rights Act, Civil Rights Act, you name it, over and over and over again, housing discrimination and so forth. Yes, it's already on the books, and maybe... Just because it's on the books, it shouldn't be necessary to do anything else. But I want to commend my colleague uh, for, and I'm speaking of Councilmember Seelbach, for being sensitive to what he was told. Um, it's kind of strange, I guess, that uh, I've heard some criticism that none of the African Americans on council proposed this. And um, I can't speak for anyone else, but for myself, what I can simply say is I didn't know it was still an issue. And I live with a, a woman who is very proud of her heritage and who wears her hair natural, and I think it's beautiful. It's, I didn't know there was an issue. I've got daughters. They're, they're in the workplace. I didn't know it was an issue. Um, a long time ago, and I hadn't heard you speak about men in this regard, but a long time ago when I was a young member of the United States Air Force stationed in Thailand, 
uh, I remember in the back country where we were, people wanted to touch my hair. They'd never seen an African American. Um, I think that, in fact, I know, I wish I could live long enough to, to see that there would no longer be any necessity for passing any kind of a law or a rule or an ordinance or anything of the kind that seeks to protect African Americans or any other minority, that America finally had lived up to its creed. But we're not there yet. And so I do find, after all the conversations I've had over the last couple of days regarding this ordinance, I don't know how I missed it, but I did. It's a real issue for a lot of women. And I'm glad that we're doing this. I'm happy to support it. And the fact simply is great for the federal law, great for the state law, but at the local level, we need to do something too. And what's the proof? Because in spite of those laws, the issue that those laws are meant to prevent still occur. So I'm glad to be on record as saying that I won't accept it. I don't think anybody else should. Thank you, Mr. Steelbach. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Councilman Sittenfeld, I think was going to, you want to go first? You want to wait? Councilman Steelbach. Uh, I just want to say that uh, courts have not ruled that current laws are inclusive of discrimination based on texture and styles of mostly African American women's hair. Courts have not ruled that. Uh, I also want to mention that Procter and Gamble sent a, le a letter specifically saying to support. Uh, this ordinance, that they are supportive of it, our corporate community is. Uh, and with all due respect, Ms. Murray, I think your comments and your vote come from a place of extreme privilege and are a slap in the face to African American women who, whose stories I've heard the last several weeks are degrading, are horrible. And uh, I really do think it's a slap in the face to them. But I would just like our solicitor to respond to the, to the claims made. Um, Madam Solicitor, what's the question? So the question is, is it clear that current laws currently protect discrimination based on textures and styles of mostly African-American women? Madam Solicitor. Mr. Chair, to the council member, um, I think under the, um, the race-based discriminatory prohibitions that Councilmember Murray is referring to, um, you could probably make a claim um, based on hair texture or type. Um, however, it would be a question of proof, and that question is somewhat easier to prove if there's an actual prohibition on the discrimination of the hair type and texture. Um, you would have to, at some point, prove that there was also underlying racial discrimination um, if you do not have this kind of legislation. Mr. Chair. Council Member Denard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just, I want to thank my colleague, Chris Silbach, for bringing this forth. I think as we have, I think, emerging... So Amy Murray was talking that ish, and she's right, but she's wrong at the same time according to the city solicitor, whose job it is, is to be up on the latest laws and bylaws and rules and regulations, right, uh, before the council starts these conversations. So when they go to her, she's ready with an answer. And her answer is, is you could probably make a claim under the existing state and federal laws, but it would be much easier if you had something specific about this specific each issue, style and texture of non-white women's hair. So there it is, Amy Murphy, and she's a lawyer. So I said, Amy Murray, I sent Drop a message. Drop, you get my message on Twitter? You got an early nominee for Gilligan of the Week. That's Amy Murray. She sounds like a damn fool. What is she talking about? Is this, is this what she got to do as a white female to get respect inside the Hamilton County Republican Party? She got to make these kind of votes? <sighs> experience she doesn't have the lived experience so it's no disrespect to her and what she's lived through but to say well this is already covered because throughout history you that's know, the same racist dismissive bullshit they said excuse my language but it's about civil rights not that i want to carve out any distinctions but it's the same bs that people used to say about you know any kind of protections of a minority group we already got it 
We don't need no federal laws. We don't need no specific house discrimination laws. We don't need it. 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 That's because the Fox wants to do what the Fox wants to do. Period. So that's that's what it is. This is Tamaya Denar. Let me let finish up on that. But I want to get to the other vote they talked about as well, which I think is very interesting. Being a star um, uh, athlete and then someone Christopher telling Smith you you have to change your look in order to participate. Um, so it's real. It's also real for men. Um, the same wrestle, I think uh, you might have been the president of the Sentinels, but there's conversations around men wearing their beards and, and how that impacts because and afros. Um, so this, these are all discussions that have happened. So anyway, is he just, right about I that? To is there, is there that, a beard uh, stare? Wait, 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 wait. You know, because, you know, that beard games matter. Facebook page changed the world. I see dudes out there, young dudes, man, showing off their facial hair follicles, showing it all off. Got a full chin full of hair, looking like a man. Because a real man has hair on his freaking face. Especially, this is the Midwest, something like that. Mid-Central, Mid-East. Going into the fall out here with your smooth baby skin face. Real men have hair on their faces. Even if it's a little bit. I need some kind of follicle. Uh, Is there a discrimination out there against men? And have you run into some kind of employment discrimination or on-the-job discrimination because you had... I mean, if your beard is growing out of control, they might ask you to, like, maintain it. If you got one of these Oktoberfest sauerkraut beards... Then, it, who really wants that time? I mean, outside of Oktoberfest, it ain't really rocking, B. But if you got a nice little manicure, you know, you know James Harden, I don't, I don't have no problem with that. I'm very supportive of the legislation. I just want to emphasize there are men who are also impacted um, that will be helped by this legislation. Mr. Chair. Yeah, Just to wrap that up, yeah, that, that, that young man was named Andrew Johnson. Okay, let, let's move forward. He, uh, a view will change your minds and um, and, and put uh, the this uh, is Greg Lansman. finance meeting scheduled back to weekly uh, so that we can avoid the kind of conflict and uncertainty and frustrations that we had uh, prior to uh, uh, the weekly meetings. I have 23. Roll call and adoption of the motion. Councilmember Silva? Yes. Councilmember Sittenfeld? Yes. Vice Mayor Smitherman? Yes. Councilmember Young? Yes. Councilmember Denard? Yes. Councilmember Landsman? Yes. Councilmember Mann? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Uh, can, uh, item 24, roll call and adoption of the motion. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Councilman Silva. So I just want to clarify, it is the decision of the city manager to fly the rainbow LGBTQ plus flag. This is just putting us on, on record as motions do, supporting his decision to do it this year and to continue doing that in years to come. Roll call and pass or adoption of the motion. Councilmember Silva. Yes. Councilmember Sittenfeld. Yes. Vice Mayor. You're listening to city council from yesterday. A couple things happened. With all due respect, you did for. sound like you were kind of patting yourself on the back, like as if we've actually done something. We have not done what we needed to do. We have not done right by the people in the city, particularly the underserved people in the city. So denial. while I do think that there's space and an appreciation for the quantitative data that you cited, although you can make numbers look the way you want to do, to want them to look, that's why I'm not really... Oh, it's a huge fan of that. It's the qualitative data. It's the stories that are also facts. And people are getting further and further behind. So I think we should give equal balance to both quantitative quantitative, and qualitative data that says people are being left behind. So uh, for this reason, I think that we should shift gears. I think it's mighty privileged just to sit back and say, hey, United Way, you're doing a great job. Uh, continue doing what you're doing. No, we need to do something different. There's, I don't know. I think we sat here for weeks and weeks and weeks and discussed a music venue but we don't sit for weeks and weeks and weeks and talk about people who are being underserved and what's going on in our communities. And we need to, somebody needs to lie a fire under us to do things differently. And we need to do things differently. I'm not going to sit in this seat and just act like everything's okay. It's not okay. 
we need a fire under our butts to move things, to get things to people that they need. And one, the first stop is the first, the first place is saying what the United Way is doing isn't working. And, and I, you know, I, I just, I think we need to do things differently. So um, that's why I really, I was so quiet on the music venue thing. Cause I'm thinking like, this doesn't impact the majority of the city it impacts a bunch of rich people. Let's talk about things that impact people who are underserved and poor. So, well, see now you now you now you can hear why I like her. She's saying what needs to be said, and she don't really drop subliminals, but she you got to listen to every word she's saying. You sit around here for weeks and weeks and weeks debating the menu, the, the music venue. You want to make sure that it, it, that it is the exact and the appropriate plan in every detail. We've got to talk about every square inch where the lighting's gonna be. Right, where the, and then you want to gloss over the shit that really matters to people and say, okay, we'll go with the status quo. We have to do things differently, and you're by virtue. Of and she also says something that I've been saying that we keep making the same old rich people rich. What's the use of having a renaissance if you're not making no new money millionaires? This is you're just making the rich richer. How do we? How do I impact from that? What am I getting out of the, the music venue? Well, I mean, I'm not in that industry. For people in that industry or some kind of ancillary industry, you might get something out of it. But back to these flows. You're like, well, everything's okay. It's moving in the right direction. It's not moving in the right direction fast enough. We have to do something differently. And it's easy for you to say, you're not, you know, you're, your water's not turned off. Your power's not turned off. There's people who are suffering in the city, and we need to do things differently. Well, I believe the $30 million that the county's paying to Hilltop is corporate welfare, and I would have liked your help to stop it last week. Uh, any other comments on this topic? Mr. Chair. What? Councilman oh, Lamb. Hold on. What did he say? He said he believes that the $30 million the city council allocated last week is corporate welfare, and he would have liked to Maya Denard's help on that. You hear John Crazy throwing them in? Yeah. We hear it all. So just uh, briefly, I, you know, um, Greg Lansman led the effort last year to get uh, us moving in the in the direction of m moving all of our contracts uh, where there's external operating uh, budget support to performance based contracts, and so I I actually support the idea of bringing all of this in house, any of the contracts in house. Um, where we are providing operational support. Um, I, I think the performance-based contracting work is hugely important uh, and will take shape over the next couple of years and get you know, all of the, the investments that we make um, heading in a direction where we're having the most impact possible. And, and that includes, in my opinion, those uh, 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 programs that uh, are being funded through the United Way process, uh, you know, I, I think it's critically important that those have the best results possible because of how important it is for us to make much uh, more significant progress as it relates to uh, opportunities and, and, and poverty and, and closing uh, any number of, 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 of gaps. Uh, I do think sitting down and having a conversation with the United Way and the administration and sorting through what that would look like makes sense. And, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I think the United Way has been a, a very good partner and they've obviously invested, you know, uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, in just the last couple of years in efforts to reduce poverty. So I don't want to do anything that would um, suggest our... Uh, we don't want to, you know. uh, First of all, <clears throat> I want to support what Mr. Denard is saying. I need for her to know that her comments don't fall on deaf ears. Um, she is correct when she's saying that there's a lot of suffering that's going on, and I don't think she in any way is trying to blame United Way. What she is saying is that she's looking at how we spend money to correct some of these issues, and she's not seeing much or any movement on the needle. Personally, I find that hard to argue with. <clears throat> like her, I see this. I know people going through it. Um, it is a real problem that most of us down here just don't have to deal with. Uh, but I want to make a comparison so that it's kind of clear that uh, the respect we have for United Way is... But the
I, I absolutely believe. The job done. And I'm saying, you know, people elected us to do this job, and uh, if we're afraid to do it, we should say that we're afraid to do it. But otherwise, I think we need to look at uh, Mr. Landsman bringing these issues back in the house, and perhaps council sitting down and doing what's necessary, or if we don't want to do that, that we establish a methodology, perhaps in-house, to get these things done. But I, for one, uh, am not satisfied with United Way's ability to address the problems in a way that moves the needle. And I think it's kind of analogous to uh, our inglorious football team here in Cincinnati. We changed coaches, not because the coach wasn't a good guy, not because he wasn't doing the best he could do. It just appeared that in spite of his best effort, he wasn't going to be able to take that team to the next level. It was time to make a change. And that's the way I'm looking at United Way. It's not that they're not good people. It's not that they don't have a good mission. But I think that we're at the point where we need to take a serious look at whether we're serious about what we're charging them to do, we need to find another way to get that job done. So, Ms. Denard, I wanted you to know that I signed this motion because I believe in what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe we haven't done the best job of articulating what needs to be said. It's the best way I know how to say it, but it is time for a change. Mr. Chair. Uh, last comment, hopefully, and then we can take a roll call on adoption of the motion. Uh, Councilman Lance. Yeah, if it were amended to just read, we would like the administration to provide a recommendation on uh, how human service funding could be facilitated by the city of Cincinnati in-house. I would be more than happy to support it. Mr. Chair. Councilmember Denard. I have no problem making that amendment. Mr. President, would you... Uh, well, why don't we see if we can read back the, the new language for sure, the benefit you. of Ms. Autry. Uh, we move that the administration provide a recommendation on how human services funding could be facilitated by the city of Cincinnati, comma, in-house. Mr. Chair. Council Member Denard. In the sentence, we would also like the option on, on other organizations who could administer this funding. So we're just taking that sentence out, I presume. The first and third sentence. Mr. Chair. Vice Mayor Smitherman, then uh, Councilman Seelman. I just want to say, um, first one opening statement is to say that I think that collectively all members of council, the mayor, the administration, all care about the poor, period. Um, I support the motion as it was originally written and I support the motion as it has now been changed. Um, you know, I have brought comment over many years about the process. Uh, my colleague, uh, council member, man um, and his analysis about politics involved um, I don't know I don't know council member man if I would describe it that way and I understand what you're saying it, it's it's valuable and it's thoughtful um, I want council to be more involved with the decision making of how those dollars are allocated even though it was a rough process when it was happening here and so I understand um, your perspective because I have served under both processes. What I'll say to you is that when those groups would come here, um, and I think, and I don't want to speak for any of my colleagues, um, but it was interesting the lack of diversity of their leadership when they were here because you can see them mm -hmm. um, and the people that were being served by mm -hmm. those nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I told you, I'm still here been listening to city council from yesterday they got some interesting things we're gonna have to listen more probably abbreviated not at the same length unless that's what it calls for but i wanted you to hear their voices without my interpretation hear who's saying what who's silent what voices do you not hear i'm playing it i mean i'm skipping ahead i think you can kind of tell because it's funny a slight pause but i'm i'm just playing it the way it rolls 
So when exactly did this happen? The city council decided to start outsourcing the decisions about what what nonprofits get funded and not. Uh, I'm with Smithering on that. I think it should be done in-house by city council. That's what the people voted on you to do to make those decisions. And it does. I think people coming in front of you, I think it does give you a chance to 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 kind of read them, to see them, to look at them. Back to this. Um, and so I think it's valuable for us to make decisions, to um, make sure the resources are going where the city wants them to go. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I, I, I'd like to see us more involved. The last point that I will make is that, um, you know, in the middle of the opioid crisis, um, there was funding that was cut. And I just, it shocked me that there was a reduction um, in funding that, that came from money that we had provided to the United Way um, in the middle of that crisis. Um, I didn't understand it. I, I, I don't know. But ultimately, council intervened and changed it back. Um, so anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support either version. I'm viewing this as a report and a process where we're going to get something back. Is that correct to the, to the audit, right? And so I'm viewing this as a report to move a process forward so that we can look at what our options are. Um, anyway, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, roll call on adoption of the mo- or, I'm sorry, Councilman Seelbug. Uh, I just want to say that I think it would be a disaster to bring this in house. Um, then you would have all. Interesting. So that's just a little bit more of what was going on. You see, uh, that was Councilman Seelbug said he thinks it's a disaster to bring it in house. Interesting. Um, let's go to the phones here. Let's go to the phones. 513-873-7134. I, I just had a call. Oh, here we go. Uh, sorry about that. Let me try it this way. All right, 513-873-7134. Now, we've been talking about Tamaya Denard, and I think we can get, we got Tamaya Denard on the line right now. Okay, she called me. <laughs> she might have tried to call me from a different number. Hey, Tamaya, if you're listening, then just call whatever number and I'll, I'll answer and bring you on. Yeah, I got a message from Tamaya Denard saying that perhaps she might get a chance to give us a call here this morning. And we got a call coming in right now. Let's go straight to the phones. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing great. Tamaya Denard. Yes, we've, been, it is. We, we've been talking about you all morning. <laughs> Oh, that's, I don't know how that's, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I uh, just happened to uh, sit down. I just got to City Hall, and I, I was tuning in and uh, heard the discussion, so I'm happy to, to take uh, take part in the, in the discussion. Okay, well, primarily we've been talking about, you know, the decision, the vote yesterday, 4-4 vote, as to whether the United Way should continue to disperse city dollars to nonprofits. Am I describing that right? Is that the role and responsibility? That is correct. So they we have a... Uh, Human Services Advisory Committee, and they advise on the direction uh, as given to the, the city gives them direction, and then they pass on their recommendations to the United Way, and then it's on the United Way to decide in accordance with those with that direction which organizations do they feel uh, need to be funded in order to carry out or execute um, the priorities of City Council. And how long has that been the setup? Because it hasn't always been that way. No, it used to be uh, that they, um, you know, everything was decided in-house, but I, I'm not really sure. I think it's been probably maybe 10 or 15 years ago that was just, that changed. Well, I, I read earlier directly from your Facebook page, and it seemed like you were adding some caveats to let people know this ain't personal and I'm not against the United Way, which, you know, for me was never needed. I think it's completely within the boundaries of all citizens and representatives to ask whether the United Way is being as efficient as it can be. Is well, it living up to our goals? Because, well, I, I, I agree with you, but I did that because some of my colleagues had concerns about optics as to what, you know, it would look like we're dumping the United Way and, and things like that, but that wasn't the case at all. So I wanted to be clear that I do know personally there's good people that work there. So it's like, you know, I, I there's sometimes people have an inability to – be nuanced in their thinking, so I wanted to be clear because if you don't ask, if you don't overtly say something, people will assume otherwise. You know what I mean? So I had to, I wanted to make sure I was clear in saying that United Way is not a bad organization, and I didn't want to seem like I was not grateful for the things that they have done uh, because they've done some good things in our city, and I just want to make sure that's not lost. However, when we're talking about moving the needle, when we're talking about making sure that things 
uh, you know, grassroots organizations, those community organizations. I know a lot of mom and pop nonprofits who are you're literally spending their own money, but they're effective. And I'm thinking, what could they do if we would give them more money, if they were, if they could be scaled out a little bit greater? At the same time, there's organizations who take money who are ineffective, and they're ineffective for, for a number of different reasons. It could be that they don't really understand the people that they're serving. It could be they've been doing things the same way for a long time and they don't want to change. It could be that they don't have the cultural competencies to um, help that community. It could be a number of reasons why they're ineffective, but the, but the bottom line is they're ineffective. And, and not all of them, but what I'm saying is like we need to take inventory, reevaluate what's happening. And I think you're right. We were elected to make those decisions. And it's not, you know, it's not going to be the, the best process, but I think I shouldn't say the best. It won't be the most fun process, but I think it'll be the best process. What I think also happened is when we did that, we kind of said, it's kind of like how when a lot of people uh, don't want to see homelessness, so they kind of like, let's move it so we can act like it doesn't exist. I think in, this, in, a, in a weird work sort of way, I think city council, when they decided to give it to the United Way, it was like, let's move this out of our face so we don't get a chance to see it. And I think that's been a detriment to our decision making because we don't have the proximity to the issues that we need. Some of us do but some of us don't. And I think that you can tell that by how people make decisions. So it's four, four. What does that mean? Well, um, I will say this is interesting. I was thinking about this um, yesterday on my drive home. This is one thing, you know, we have uh, four African-American members of city council, and this is one thing that all four of us agree on. Uh, Jeff wasn't, he was absent yesterday, so he couldn't place the, make the tie breaking uh, vote. So it was four to four, but it's very rare that you get uh, uh, something because of our political differences that all four of us agree on. I thought that was interesting. So it was the four of us. Gray, like I said, um, Jeff didn't vote because he was he wasn't uh, present. But in addition to Greg Landsman, this is something that we all agree on because we know we've heard firsthand and we've seen firsthand the black organizations coming to us and saying to us, either one, you know, these programs are ineffective, or two, how can I get funding for my organization who's doing really good work? And so um, four four really means, and it's kind of disappointing too. And, and we'll talk about I could talk about the hair discrimination thing, which is cool, and I was happy to support it. But that was a slam dunk. Like I have nothing bad to say about what happened. That's a really cool thing. But it's really strange how we can support something as easy as that, but then the, the heavy lifting of something like this, it was harder to get the support from. And I, and we could talk about why that is. But four four means that you know next week we can, well even if it failed um, at a margin greater than four four we can bring it back up for reconsideration. And I'm hoping that we do and that Jeff will be present next time. But I think in this situation, though, Nathan, we're going to have to have six votes so that we can make sure it's veto-proof. Because in my discussions with the mayor, I don't know how, how much you played the meeting yesterday, but we went back and forth. Uh, the mayor's not in support of, uh, is not supportive of this. So I want to make sure we have six votes so that we can make sure it's veto-proof. Um, and that's a super majority of council, six votes. So um, hopefully one of my colleagues who voted against it will have a change of heart. And we can have six votes because even when Jeff comes on board, we'll still only have five. So did the mayor articulate why he was resistant to the idea? <clears throat> I think he was resistant because he thinks that, um, you know, for, in, in his calculation, the things that he read, poverty is, is getting better in Cincinnati. And I'm not totally refuting that, but um, he thinks that, you know, what's it's not broken, so don't fix it. And that was really what the people who voted against it thought, like, well, hey, like, it's moving along at a pace, but the problem is we don't have any sense of urgency. Like, this needs to happen immediately, and we just can't sit back and say, well, it's it's moving, so let's just kind of let it go along, or I don't want to hurt the United Way's feelings, you know. So it was um, – that, that to me was uh, – the, the, the seemed to be the, the, the narrative that we were fighting yesterday uh, in, in council chambers along with the mayor carrying that same narrative. How much of it do you think was, like, not wanting to hurt – the United Way's feelings, you know, so-called Cincinnati polite. Yeah, Cincinnati polite. That's exactly what it is. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I would gauge probably two, two, two votes of that was probably two or three votes of that was um, probably not wanting to hurt the United Way's feelings. We we don't want to seem ungrateful. We don't want to seem like we're we're dumping them. We don't want to seem like we don't like them. And it's like it's 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 past time for that. Like people are suffering in this city. And I gave an example of someone who lives next door to my mom who they don't have water and they have school-aged children. I mean, this is happening all over the city. And the mayor's like, it's, you know, it's getting better. No, there's one half of Cincinnati, there's half of Cincinnati that's really growing and it's doing really well, and the other half is being left behind, and no one really is trying to do anything about it. Like, it's just we have to really get to the root causes of things. We, can, we can't continue to one-off uh, situations where we have someone who comes before us and we do something for that person and we do something for that person. If we don't look at bold systemic change, 
we're going to keep one offing things and that's not effective. That doesn't help, you know, move the needle at all. So that's why we have to really, this was, I think, pretty bold because I know United Way has a lot of, you know, money there, a lot of donors, a lot of, you know, corporate folks and, you know, you know, a lot of, it's not politically expedient for, for us to do it this way, but I don't think we have a choice. It's not working. So if your plan passes, what would happen then? So, so the next thing that would happen is we would have to decide, and, I, and the way the motion was, we initially had it written where we would say, well, we want the administration to see if we can either bring it in-house or see if there's another third party that we can maybe put a place a bid out to to administer the funds. Uh, my colleague, Greg Lansman, he said, well, I'm more comfortable if we take out the um, sentence of a third party and just make it in-house. And so then when I did that, my other colleague, Chris Silbach, said, well, I don't want it to just have the option of being in-house, I want to have it where we have the third party. So Greg said, okay, well, I'm okay with, I'll vote yes with both options in it. We changed it and Chris Silbach still voted no. So I was very disappointed in that. However, um, you know, we will, um, after, after, you know, we'll bring it back up for reconsideration. Hopefully it passes uh, next week. And then after that, we're going to ask the administration to really look at the feasibility of what, what they recommend to be the best process. They bring that report back to us. And then we, with, we don't have to, t- we don't have to vote according to what they say, but it's really important that we look at the recommendations because they're the ones who have to administer uh, the decisions that we carry, that we make. So what would be in your plan that would make sure, like if this passes in your plan, what, what's, what's in place to make sure that it starts to hit those grassroots organizations and that it doesn't end up like being like a bidding kind of situation. It goes back to the same folks they were doing it originally. Well, we, we would have to use our Human Services Advisory Committee if they were willing to serve in this capacity, again, to help us kind of decide what, you know, um, what the priority should be. And then after that, I think we would have to decide on, um, and Greg Lance has already really done a great job of this, of like starting to set up metrics. And I think part of the problem is, and we think back, and I, I, thinking back even to like the Center for Closing the Health Gap, you can't gauge um, – organizations where you're dealing with inequities, you can't use the same scorecard and barometer that you use for other organizations. So we have to really create, um, you know, metrics that are suitable for the organization. So it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a lot of work, and, and I don't want to make any mistake about that. But I think what we have to do is make sure we understand metrics and, you know, what we gauge as, as success so that we can measure to see how effective organizations are. Right now, the United Way's uh, metric system doesn't really fit or is not good for many organizations because it's not, I don't, th- I don't think it take, takes into account a lot of circumstances that a lot of organizations are, are dealing with. So we'd have to really, um, after the administration makes a recommendation, we have to like look look at maybe, I think Greg, like I said, I think he made a, a great uh, plan in terms of measuring city contracts. And so that's really what we have to do is like set up the metric system and then really have, you know, when it's, when it's that time of the year, after we set our priorities, what organizations do we feel fit into those priorities and which ones are effective? And I think that'll be a lot of like people, and I'm not really quite sure what it looks like totally if it's because my committee is equity, inclusion, youth in the yard. So I'd imagine it would come through um, our committee, uh, different organizations, or we probably place a, a RFP. I'm not really quite sure yet, but it'll be one of the two. So speaking with Tamaya Denard, and just to clarify, because people are asking me inside the chop shop who voted which way. So you voted for it. Landsman voted for it. Um, Pastor wasn't there, so he couldn't vote. Wendell no. Young voted for it. And Christopher Smitherman voted for it. Correct. Okay. That means Silbach, Sittenfield, Murray, and who am I missing? Uh, David Mann. And David Mann. They all voted against it. Right. Correct. And did they articulate, because I, I didn't get to that part in the video, did they articulate the reasons why? Was it like, hey, it ain't broke, so don't fix it? Or was there something yeah, that more was a, that intelligent was a, and, that? I, and I'm really slow, honestly. Like, I, people do it to me, but I'm really slow to name check uh, my colleagues. Um, but I will say that, you know, some, uh, David Mann was very clear. And his concern was that I don't want to go back to doing it the way we used to because it's, it becomes political. That was his concern. Um, Chris Silbach's concern, which, like I said, was disappointing because we made the change for him, and then he still voted no. But he... He said he didn't want it to come in house because he think it would be a terrible um, you know, situation, be you know a bad process. He didn't he didn't like the idea of what that process could look like. So that's why I presume he voted no. Uh, the other two I can't really say. Uh, Amy Murray and uh, uh, PG I can't say. So I don't uh, know. 
speaking of Amy Murray, did did she? Is this an ideology? Did, did she, so the, the quote that came over the media was she was like, "Well, we already got laws on the books." But then the yeah. city solicitor was asked the question, and she clearly said, "Yeah, but the situation could be helped by being specific about this right. particular kind of thing." Right. Did she articulate any any reasons more as to why she was resistant? On the natural no, hair honestly, band? I, I I like Amy, but I think she's really um, sometimes like it. She has like uh, followers and you know people that are her constituency that don't you know that don't appreciate these type of uh, you know um, efforts of inclusion. So I you know she it was disappointing because it was like pretty much this this legislation was pretty much a slam dunk as you can get. You know, twenty years ago, uh, would people have the courage to do something like this? I'm not sure. But in, you know, 2019, um, this didn't really, to me, it was, I'm happy about it, but I, I don't, I want to be clear, like, it didn't take a whole lot of courage to vote yes on this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's, it's where the country is, it's where society is. Um, and that's why I don't, I'm not trying to make any sort of comparison, but something like this, which is a slam dunk, and then something like, you know, bucking status quo was a little bit harder. And that's why I think the votes in those two different legislations were, were so, were so, uh, so such a stark difference. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I was disappointed. Like usually I don't have the same thing. People vote the way they vote, but this to me was like, and I said it to Amy, like I personalized it when I was talking with her. I was like, this is your uh, opportunity to affirm me and Jasmine and Kamara, but you know, people that you see every day and you're still choosing not to. So it was, it was disappointing, but I think it was uh, maybe a lack of proximity to people, to, to, to people who have these challenges. Um, and I think it was a constituency in the people that she represents. Speaking with somebody, but again, I just, I'm, I'm so I, there's a lot of trepidation because I don't like when someone the votes where they vote. That's that's it for me. I don't I don't care to, you know. But it was I will say it was disappointing. She's a member of Cincinnati City Council. What's in the near future, Tamaya? What what's the next issue? I mean, we're keeping our eyes on this, obviously. But what's the next big issue or issues that city uh, that city council going to be dealing with that the community uh, should keep our eyes open about? Yeah, well, we have um we had some carryover dollars from the budget, and um we had a you know a people put in their ideas of how that money should be spent. Um, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, Umadot was an organization that helps um, deal with addiction with um, Black and Brown people who actually employs Black and Brown people. They asked for two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. I we didn't have enough money to do that, so uh, my colleague Wendell Young and I put forth the motion to give them one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. That's been cut now to seventy-five thousand dollars. Um, so I think they need to keep an eye. If I can give any advice to the listeners, I know they're very politically savvy and the, chop, the choppers are, are on it, but I would just make sure I would advise them to keep pay attention to Budget and Finance Committee. Um, that's so big. It, it meets, we're trying to figure out if it's going to meet every Monday or every other Monday. We've been meeting every Monday, but there's some motions to change that. But I really want people to tune into City Cable. I really want people to, I love that you were playing the actual um, the meeting, like I, I kind of was like, it was kind of a lot like C-SPAN, you know, you just got to get to hear it without any commentary. Right. So I, I want people to really like tune in to um, these meetings, particularly budget and finance. A lot of things are getting decided and a lot of people don't really know how people vote. People see people out in the community and they're like, oh, I love so-and-so, I love so-and-so, but how do they vote your interest? So, and, and to me, there's no greater indicator than what happens in budget and finance. Everybody's a member of budget and finance except uh, Amy Murray and Christopher Smitherman. So those type of things people need to really uh, hone in on. So that's really big. Um, well, 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 sharpen that just a little bit for me, Tamaya. When we sure. when we watch budget and finance via city cable, what what are some words, phrases that we should be looking for? Well, I think um, there's like certain like allocations of funding that people need to. So what happens in case people don't know? And I, like I said, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but I just want to make sure people are clear on what the process is. So we all have committees, right? And Committee um, things go through committee according to what their what the jurisdiction is, and then after something gets voted out of committee, then it goes on to the general the council the main council um, on Wednesdays where we all are obviously members of. So there's things need to be um, you know if it's an ordinance, what is the ordinance doing? If it's um, a report, what is that report asking? Uh, so each each item on the agenda is listed as a as some sort of ordinance motion resolution, report, communication. Uh, so when you see report, your question should mean to be, what is that report? What What is being reported? What, is, what facts are being derived from that report? If it's a motion, what is that motion asking us to do? If it's an ordinance, which is an ordinance is a law change, what is that 
ordinance changing or what is that or what are either uh, ordinance either changing existing law or creating a new law so those are things that people need to be um need to be aware of and ordinances like in the form of like a tax abatement things like that that's an ordinance so the 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 everything's important but particularly as it relates to um um ordinances is really and it's something we pass things as emergencies a lot and sometimes it doesn't need to be an emergency we you know sometimes it does so those are type things that people need to pay attention to I appreciate it, Tamaya, and I appreciate the good work you're putting in, and uh, we'll be watching. All right. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, talking with you this morning. Yep, most def. Appreciate it. Doors always open. Tamaya Denard, and uh, what do you think about what she had to say? 513-873-7134. So I'm going to take a quick pause, everybody. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. This is the Nathan Ivey Show, live, local, and vocal. Broadcasting live from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. Powered by Sin Digital Media. A new urban voice in the city of Cincinnati. And we'll be right back, everyone. about the stock market always looking to invest in a good opportunity something with the potential to grow so what if you could invest in the future the future of kids like a stock not the kind of stock where you invest to make money but a stock for a social change a whole new kind of investment called better futures when you invest it helps students like me go to college which ends up making the future better for everybody I could be the first college graduate in my family, the first district attorney from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there will be a second and a third. This can really be the start of something. My name is Charles, and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. All right, good morning, all. Welcome back. Nate Ivey in the air chair. It's a quick break. Uh, Just enough time to get some water (laughs) and to give you a break of my voice. And set up our next piece. Good morning, everybody. Like, don't forget, this Sunday is the First Lady's Health Fair Day. 12 locations, all on one day. You can get health screenings for you and your family. Find doctors and physicians in Cincinnati accepting new patients. Get self-care ideas, tips, activities. Your health matters because your health is your wealth. So please think about attending the First Ladies of Health Free Health Day. Again, 12 locations here in Hamilton County. Anyone can visit any of the locations to get free health tests and screenings, counseling, and follow-up plans. The insured and the uninsured persons with any pre-existing condition can visit a participating location and receive confidential testing including confidential HIV testing, which, by the way, is on the rise here in Hamilton County. You know why? Lack of education and focus and perhaps a lack of screening. So good morning, everybody. 513-873-7134. Open your mind before you open your mouth. And good morning, good morning. Great to be with you. It's a beautiful Thursday. How many people are stepping out to Blink tonight or over the weekend? How many people are going to Blink this weekend? If you've never been before, I went last year. I had a hell of a good time. Look, you go with some good people, you have a good time. What are your plans for the weekend? Thursday is the new Friday, so let's talk about the weekend, shall we? 
I also want to get your residual thoughts on Tamaya Denard and what she had to say. Do you agree with her plan? What is your take? And her assessment of like the two votes. Like she said, one is a slam dunk. You're talking about black women's hair. That's a slam dunk in 2019. 20 years ago, maybe not so much in this conservative ass county. But times done changed. What is Amy Murray? I'm telling you, she's like a dinosaur, man. Somebody dug her up, her ideology. This is not the 50s. Earth. Earth to Amy. <laughs> Earth to Amy. Uh, good morning to you. 513-873-7134. I think it's very important. I mean, when they do these votes, that's one of the most interesting things to know how people ultimately vote on it. That's what really matters. That's what really matters. Uh, good morning. I'm going to switch gears here just a little bit in the second half of the show. And I may talk a little bit more national stuff. Of course, the local stuff and whatever we discussed at this point is always open to be discussed. You already know. Uh, but go ahead. Where, where's Drop at? Did Drop get the message? Amy Murray. She's the front runner for Gilligan of the Week. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, so the Martin Luther King the third is telling people that they should boycott the NFL until Colin Kaepernick gets his job back. And I didn't know that was the goal now. Didn't know that. He recently told a crowd of folks, it ain't going down until that man gets his job back. And I'll say it again. I think he's a little bit off. He's a little bit off. I appreciate the fact that people think that the NFL is that important, that important. But ultimately, I think that we're making it more important than it really is. But this whole thing about the NFL and Colin Kaepernick, you know what it does? It polarizes people. So you know where people stand, like Rihanna. Rihanna says she turned down the Super Bowl for Colin Kaepernick. Quote, I couldn't be a sellout, end quote. Bad girl Riri. Now that's a bad girl Riri right there. That's my kind of woman right there. Woman with a conscience. Plus, she's hella rich, so <laughs> the little dollars they was going to give her mean nothing. Rihanna's bigger than the Super Bowl. But she opened up recently in her decision to turn down the NFL's invitation to perform at the Super Bowl last year. Quote, I couldn't do that to Colin Kaepernick, she says. I couldn't do that. For what? Who gains from that? Not my people. I just couldn't be a sellout. I couldn't be an enabler. Yeah, that's bad girl. Riri saying, nah, I ain't coming. Where's fame at? Where these sucky MCs out here try to make it seem like, oh, nobody's paying attention to Kyle. I'm telling you, whether you watch the NFL or not, people watched the stands that he took, and they took some energy and or something out of it. And that's just another example. Now, Travis Scott, he didn't give a damn. He did the Super Bowl last year with, with Maroon 5. I don't even, I never even saw the, the performance. Bad girl Riri, she got conscious, yo. There's thing within, uh, things within that organization that I do not agree with at all. And I was not about to go and be of service to them in any way. I feel her. I feel her. I, I feel her. That makes me like bad girl Riri even more. I like her even more now. There it is, see? There it is. Now, you got to do that on your job in your little small world. See, like, it just can't be bad girl Riri. It's got to be you, too. Like, in every, whatever your world is, a, a sphere of influence, you got to be willing to do the same thing. Are you? Are you, will, are you willing to do the same thing? That might be what it takes. I like that. But this whole boycott until Colin, if Colin Kaepernick got a job, so what? That's not the end of the story. I, I just ain't really feeling it. The real test will be the next time there is a player that speaks out and what happens. Tell you, man, freedom of speech ain't free. Look, ask the NFL. Ask Colin Kaepernick. 
Ask Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Ask Jim Brown. Both those brothers, man, those are just entertainers, right? They were surveilled by the FBI for many years because of the words that were coming out of their mouth. The NBA is dealing with that right now with China. You had an NBA executive from the Houston Rockets that tweeted something that was in support of the pro-democracy uh, demonstrators, right? China was like, ho, 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 and NBA partner. Stop right there. That's that's not how we determine freedom of speech. So right now, whether you know or not, there's this big thing between the NBA and the country that is China because an NBA executive dared to tweet something. He didn't. I remember the tweet. He didn't say anything negative per se about the Chinese government. He just said he was in support of the protesters. And it's, it's caused a, a, a corporate international incident between the NBA and now China. Freedom of speech. It's very, very it costly, man. It's very costly. We just take it for granted. Uh, Mike Jones writes, Joe Madison talked about Cincy and the new hair discrimination law this morning. He shout out Lincoln Ware, too. LOL. It was great. It was great. GAH writes, I'm blinking it with the grandbabies and family. Good morning, choppers. We'll have a good time, man. Man, listen, we need some time to relax a little bit. I mean, don't, 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 you know, expose. <laughs> don't keep yourself exposed. But we need some relaxed time. Unplug from the Matrix. Enjoy your family. Uh, Clue Magic writes, Earl Spence damn near died over the weekend. His Ferrari crossed the double yellow and flipped multiple times. Arrow was ejected from the vehicle. Is that right? Man, I ain't even hip to that. Let me look at it. Earl Spence is a hell of a boxer. He just had a big bout, a big win over a tough opponent. He's in critical condition after being ejected from the Ferrari. <sighs> I'm looking at the car right now. It's, he must have been. What the hell was he doing? So apparently he was out by himself. He thought he was, uh, I guess he thought he was untouchable. Start, he starts revving up the Ferrari. It's a nice little car too before it was damaged. Damn, man. Thanks for the vine on that. Appreciate it. Dallas Police Department confirmed the accident occurred at around 3 a.m. on Wednesday. Mm. He didn't mess up his career, man. I mean, you know, come on, man. You're 29 years old. You weigh 147 pounds. You just won a victorious, hard-fought battle against Sean Porter. You got more respect. Everybody respects your game now. You're undefeated. Unified welterweight champion, I believe. And now you're sitting in ICU. It's all at least in terms of your physical attributes, is all over. Is he ever going to box again? The only thing that probably saved him is his excellent physical condition. That probably saved his life. Because everybody knows if you're in good condition, you know, you have some kind of injury, you're more prone to either sustain it or recover faster if your body's in tip-top shape. His body's in tip-top shape. I bet you that saved, saved him. He got ejected from the Ferrari. Damn. See, that's how people get taken out of the game. Damn. Damn. Mm, mm, mm. Well, hope the brother's okay, man. Thanks for that, man. He's got two little girls and stuff. You know, he's a little, he's a father. Now he's laying up in ICU, man. But again, I bet you his excellent shape saved his life, Clue. No doubt about it. Like some, if you're just an average little slob body out here, man, something like that'll take you out the game on impact. You're done. Like, like your, your bones will break like pretzels in a plastic bag. Just like that. Man. I wonder what, was he falling asleep? Was he high? It looks like he had left the bar, so he might have been drinking. You know, hey, here's a take. Hey, dig around, champ. Hey, the champ. Come on, man. 
You don't never see Mayweather do nothing like that. Mayweather has drivers. I mean, when you're on that level, you don't drive nowhere. Why is he driving? You just got to drive a Ferrari, right? Uh, on my, in my opinion, if you're an athlete on that level, I'm not driving anywhere. You drive. I want to get a qualified driver. That way, if I want to get slathered, which if I'm an athlete, I'm not trying to get slathered. But if I want to get slathered out here, then I can just lay in the back seat when you safely drive me home. That's what you need to do, man. Oh, man, that's terrible. I hate hearing that. It's terrible. Tony writes, Shoppers, please check out my daughter's group, Tribe, performing at Blink on Friday night at 9 a.m. on the Freedom Way stage. I can't make it. Still recouping from foot surgery. But if you down there represent, you will hear flows. Okay, Tony, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Earl Spence in intensive care. Yep, I just read it. Sister V writes, Rihanna understands her value. Right, she does understand her value. A lot of people don't. Unfortunate to say, a lot of people don't know their value. They don't understand it, even on the workplace. You got value, you know? You don't have to be the owner to have value. Blue Magic writes, ask Chris Johnson. Uh, Mike Jones writes, I have a new respect for Riri, right? Me too. Me too. But but Riri's also mega rich. Like, she just ain't Riri. Rihanna is, for years, was one of the, like, most highest paid, like, celebrities in the world. Rihanna has super crossed over. She's super pop. I mean, black people like Rihanna, white people like Rihanna, Asian people like Rihanna, racists like Rihanna. Everybody likes Rihanna. A net worth 250, 260 mil. So at that point, what does the NFL go do for her, really? If she never made another album, she's got that Fendi line, which is going to be worth a billion dollars. It's going to be a billion dollar brand soon. So, you know, that to me, that's an easy decision. It's an easy decision. But I'm glad she made it. Um, back here with your chat. I would encourage all of you to go and watch the conversation on City Cable. It's up and running for your view. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. How are people selected to the human service? Um, I'm not sure. Come on. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's human service board? Someone hit her volume was low. I read that and permed it up. Since the Tigers rise by Nathan, L-M-A-O, sauerkraut, sauerkraut beard? You know what I'm talking about. CG Dub writes, Greg Landsman, a.k.a. Speed Cameras. And then she's got a thumb going down. You don't like the Speed Cameras? Like, if Speed Cameras reduce pedestrian fatalities or accidents, would that change your mind? Blue Magic writes, yes, Nathan, in corporate America, the beard and goatee are frowned upon. Hell yeah, you can catch a side eye for having a mustache in their world. Did he just say having a mustache? In their world, he is funny for that, man. Uh, three ABs for Clue on that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> Do white people have to stop wearing big hair or helmet hair? I'm just saying, that's Mason Mahler. Blue Magic writes, why should you have to change your hair to make white folks comfortable at work? Ridiculous. I agree completely. <laughs> right. Like, why... Why do I care about your hair? That's the other thing. Uh, drop rights, got it. Amy Murray, G G O T W. Appreciate that drop. Let's give her the full service, and I'm gonna give her a link too, so she knows it. Hey, good morning to you, Donnie B. She rocks. Uh, Silbox said no. Yes, Silbox said no. Huh. Good to see you, Donnie B. Is it just me podcast Fridays, twelve thirty p.m. Uh, Sissy Tigers writes, woo, y'all are rough. I know the political drama that ensued during his career, but I also know how he impacted me as a youngster. Always loved him. I see Officer Johnson. He deserves these accolades in my estimation. Oh, boy. You know, people ain't gonna never let Scotty Johnson live that down, man. I like Scotty. I think Scotty's a good brother. I think he's a smart, intelligent brother. Um, He and I have never... We spoke about it once 
we spoke about it once many years ago in the middle of all that stuff was going on. And I'm talking about Blackwell leaving. And everybody knows the role that Scotty J played that day, driving him to city council, same city council chambers that he just got acknowledged in. And uh, the, all of that was facts. All of that is facts. And I, I don't remember what Scotty told me. I do remember he kind of walked me through the story many years ago about what had happened from his perspective. And um, I don't remember, to be honest with you, to have any recall to say anything intelligent about it. But that's probably the nature of it. Oh, boy, since he tigers. I'm working backwards here. So, but you know what it is, what it is. Each man has to deal with his own reputation, depending on what it is. So, um, <laughs> let me read these comments. Fame writes, what kind of 50-year-old man still allows himself to be called Scotty? How y'all F with this goofball nigwa? Well, I don't think that's an accurate description of Mr. Scotty Johnson. And it's it's called a nickname. I mean, you was running right here calling yourself conceited bastard. Is that better? Come on now, stop it, Bay. <laughs> oh man. Racist psychobabble. Murray is on council to obstinate and block anything which removes barriers black folks. An analysis of her voting record would be quite interesting. Um, nah, I'm blank for what fame said. Mason Muller writes, Scotty J still has Chief Blackwell slime on him. Fame writes, Scotty is a, is a professional Negro. Can you call in one day? It doesn't have to be today. Uh, but can you call in and give us a definition of what that means? I'm a little bit lost. I'm a little bit lost. CG Dub writes, not a fan. <laughs> Y'all are tough, man. Y'all are tough. Y'all are tough. Let me see here. Um, y'all funny, man. Leave Scotty alone. Damn, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, okay? <laughs> Won't let old stuff be old stuff. All right? Just let it go. Uh, Tony Rice did Blackwell dirty. Y'all wrong for that. <laughs> oh, man. Um, TNT Rice, Wendell with so much grace. TNT Rice, the moment Amy Murray shrunk in her seat. Who magic writes, next time they ask you, can they touch your hair? Tell them, yeah, if I can touch your face with my fist. Fame writes, F that nigga, he's a clown. See, there you go. Are you talking about Scotty? See, you just, you always talking tough about people, man. You need to stop it, please. <laughs> please stop. Uh, Diana writes, no sound. Hopefully not. Do, does Scotty have any regrets about what he did? I, I never asked him that. Scotty pulled a major boy move on the sheaf. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ken writes, good morning, Nathan and Chop Shop. What's really going on in Dallas? Geiger, Brown, police department, corruption, now Spence, nearly killed? Dallas is the, the site of what happened to, to JFK. You know? And I don't think the Spence is dead. He is, uh, they're talking about Errol Spence, not Mike, Mike, not Mike Pence, but Errol Spence Jr. 
apparently he was just ejected from the car. He was in his Ferrari, 29 years old. You're 5'9", 147 pounds. You just got millions deposited to your account. You're undefeated. You got your pick of the weight, the, the weight division. You can choose your next fight. It's going to be a big fight. You're going to get even more pay, more financial security. And he's probably out drinking. Maybe a fell asleep or who knows? He might have combined some alcohol with some pills or some weed or some something. You know, people be doing drugs these days. Even these athletes. Now he's seriously injured. And like, just like that, everything changes. Just last week, he was on top of the boxing world. Name somebody on his level. Maybe one or two, maybe. And now it looks like that might be over with. Just like that. Uh, Tracy writes, what is this now? All of the time? T.I. ranks his top 50 rappers of all time. Okay. I know he's doing a new podcast, and I think I'd seen this. Pac, number one, Jay-Z, Biggie, Snoop, Kanye, Drake. Okay. Everybody got a list, huh? Uh, A dark-skinned nigga with a pop belly would not have survived that crash. You're right about that. Yeah, if you got this, you 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 know you're not in shape, you soft body. And like I told you, your body would have been like uh, you know, you know, it would have been like a plastic bag with pretzels inside. <laughs> you know, slam it to the ground. What happens to the pretzels inside? That would have been your body. But Earl Smith, man, he's like a world class athlete. So I uh, hopefully he'll pull through. He'll be okay. Hopefully so. Uh, just got a couple minutes left. 513-873-7134. Uh, if you'd like to share your thoughts this morning. Okay. Great, great, great. Great to hear that. Great to hear that. Just got a great email. I am lining up in the conversation with Alicia Murphy. You can probably look for that possibly tomorrow. Tomorrow. With Alicia Murphy. Tomorrow. I want to get to make sure that you... Uh, that you are aware of it. So make sure. Okay, great. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Also, do not forget this Sunday, we have a CCW class opportunity. If you are interested, uh, we're going to meet on Mac road out in Fairfield. If you're interested, I'll give you exact details. Fairfield, Ohio. Uh, The cost will be $90. If you have a weapon, you can use it, but you do not have to bring one. Uh, They will be provided for you. If you bring your own firearm, uh, bring at least 50 rounds of ammunition. To get certified in the state of Ohio, you must go through four hours of in-class and then four hours of range instruction. So that will be the plan on this Sunday. And again, you can PayPal me or cash app The Nathan Ivy Show. And once you pay, that holds your spot. And uh, we'll meet you out there this Sunday. I want to make sure I said it before the show ends. Also, this Sunday as well, if you're not going to go be with us uh, on the firing range uh, getting certified, then perhaps you'll stop by one of the various locations. There are 12 of them in all for the First Ladies of Health Health Fair. Again, that's going on this Sunday. And they've got numerous locations throughout Hamilton County. Throughout Hamilton County. And among the services that will be offered are screenings for HIV, diabetes, hypertension, breast and prostate cancer, vision, dental, brain health, and lung screenings as well. Flu shots will also be available if you're into that. Uh, some of the children's screenings will include flu shot, blood pressure, asthma body mass index, dental, vision, speech, and language. Again, the screenings will all take place on the same day. That's Sunday, October 13th. That's this Sunday. And let me just run down just a couple of the uh, uh, of the locations. Uh, Mother of Christ Catholic Church in Winton Hills over on Winesty. The YMCA on Elm Street downtown. Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses in the West End. 
on Finley. Uh, if you're in Madisonville, New Life Temple Church. If you're in Evanston, the Evanston Recreation Center, uh, College Hill Recreation Center in College Hill, the Word of Deliverance out in Forest Park, Corinthian Baptist Church in Bond Hill, the Rockdale Academy in Avondale, Allen Temple AME in Roselawn, New Jerusalem Baptist Church in Carthage, and the New Prospect Baptist, I'm sorry, the New Prospect Baptist Church in Roselawn. Those are the locations. I want to make sure you know where you need to get the information. I'm still here. We're not going anywhere, at least until 10 a.m. Bunky writes, as the relationship expert in cyber Wakanda, Riri is certified chewable. See, there you go again. See? Tanika writes, I changed my hair so much, the white folks stay confused at my job. And I'm the only black woman there. Oh, boy. Looking at you like, how she do that? Where, where what happened to the other side? What, where does it? <laughs> TNT writes, what does this, the dark skin have to do with anything? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You didn't cross the line here, Bunky. Tanika writes, it's your time to go. It doesn't matter what size you are. I mean, yes and no. I just feel like if you're going through like some kind of like car accident or something like that, you know, then, you know, being in the best shape will allow you the best shape to recover. I think there's, I think it's medicine behind that. Like even going through like a surgery or something like that. If you're in good shape, you know what I'm saying? You eating right, you working out right. Boom. Your body's going to snap back a little faster. Then, um, you know, if you're not in good shape, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man he says just jokes chill out okay i get it as a protege of jay-z rihanna has more common sense yeah that's that that's bad girl riri right there there is a food truck startup seminar man you ever heard of such a thing it's gonna be on november the 6th food truck Startup seminar. If you've ever thought about starting your own food truck, or if you know somebody who's ever talked about starting your own food truck, that might be the first place to go, the food truck seminar. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be at the African American Chamber of Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Yes, you will hear more about that. Uh, what else is happening? Um, you got Jubilee, Cincinnati. That's happening this weekend. I'm going to try to make sure we get a conversation in tomorrow about that. I know David Banner is going to be in town over the weekend as well. I'm not sure what the setup is going to be. I may get a chance to interview him, get a couple questions in. What should I ask? Hit me up. Let me know. Oh, man. Um, let's see here. Okay, everybody's good. All right. All right, let me jump into the friends page here. See what's popping. Um, what is this? Um trying to see here what's been posted here recently in the last 24 hours. Fox News poll, news poll, record support for Trump impeachment. Yeah, it's looking bad for El Presidente. He deserves it. Judge Kemp weeps and says, I wouldn't be getting this criticism if Miss Geiger were black. Well, yeah, because how many, again, somebody should go back and do the history. How many defendants has she hugged? The real question is this, Judge Kemp. Would you have hugged her if she were black? That's the question. She's trying to flip it. Nobody's going for that. What is it? Ain't nobody want to hear that nonsense. Come on. I wouldn't be getting this criticism if Miss Geiger were black. Well, that changes the whole dynamic. 
Oh, uh, she weeps. She wants to weep now. Mm-hmm. You know, Iyanla Van Zandt, she spoke out about this case. And she said that the the Jean family, both them, both them's brother and, and father, were a great example for all of us, she said. Did you hear this? Iyanla said, basically, is us ignorant Negroes can learn from Botham Jean's family. And, you know, I just find it so interesting that a woman who is known for her nastiness wants to talk about civility and peace and love. And yeah, she praised the family. Iyanla needs to get some of this heat, too. That's why I'm bringing, I'm dragging her into this too. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring up the audio. You can hear it for yourself. So the thing that's been heard around the world right now is the judge hugging Amber Geiger. People are saying no, people are saying yes. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts. You know, it's, I find it very interesting that you go into court and they want you to put your hand on the Bible and swear to God, but then they don't want you to act like a godly being in the process. So the, the judge hugging this woman brings humanity to our legal system, which is what's missing, which is why we have so many people rotting in jail for nonviolent crimes, because the humanity is gone. So, and if we weren't in the courtroom, I'm not clear why we think we have an opinion. Why can't that judge do what she did from her heart and her mind to serve uh, Miss, uh, I should just call her Amber. <laughs> to serve Amber. Why can't you just do what was in the heart of the mind? Sure. So the, the, his brother and the judge, they both gave her hugs. So forgiveness is definitely in order. You know, forgiveness isn't for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. I am so proud of that young man for claiming his right not to spend the next 10, 15 years in anger and upset with the woman who's in jail. He said his brother would have forgiven her. So there it is. That's Iyanla. She says that we need to see show more compassion. And that was a great example of compassion. I only got a couple minutes left, but I got Donnie B on the line. What's going on, Donnie B? Good morning. How is everybody doing? Good morning. Doing great. I'm sure this is another morning for me. Uh, I was listening. Thank you so much for having that about the city council vote. I think it's more important um, for us to have stuff like that to bring awareness so we can see what's really going on downtown at city council. And I love, I love Tamaya Bernard. And one of the reasons I do is because she's a lot more, how do we say it, tactful than, than, than me with the BS. Like I just call it what it is. And sometimes I'll have a filter that I think you need to have in order to get things done across the aisle. So I wanted to say that I, um, based on what she explained, I think I just got one problem. I agree wholeheartedly with what she said. Um, I'm personally not a fan of the United Way, only because I remember when I was at a large law firm, they would try to force us to donate to the United Way campaign. And I would always ask questions about, well, you know, what do they do for minorities? What do they do for the black community? What does the United Way do, you know, for the, for the poor and the things that I care about? And I never could get concrete answers. So I agree that it's time for us to take a look at you know, whether or not they're the best ones to manage, you know, the city's, you know, budget in that area. My only issue was it sounded like from Tamaya Denar, they were trying to um, bring it back in-house, but without any clear-cut plan for what they were going to do when it comes back in-house. And my problem with that is the government is always sloppy. Um, I've never really seen the government manage stuff in an efficient, you know, manner. A lot of times when it comes back to to, to to the government, we mess it up. So I'm in agreement that I don't think it should be with United Way, but I don't want to pull it from United Way and bring it in house until there's a clear in house process, you know, and I feel like they're still in the process of trying to flesh that out. So I personally think this vote might be a little premature. You know, why don't you guys find a scene about if this thing passes, what it's going to look like in house before you vote to take it in and then try to scramble after you get the money back from United Way to figure out what you're going to gonna do with it. Um, I would have liked to heard more concrete um, issues. What are the particular nonprofits that, you know, Tamaya Denar and the others feel are not being serviced 
through the United Way, what do they do? And if you bring it back in-house, how are you going to fix it? And you kind of answer the question, but it sounds like it's so premature in the planning process that they didn't have a real answer. And I feel like it's kind of putting the cart before the the horse. So that was my take on that. And I'm not surprised that currently voted no. I mean, he needs corporate dollars in United Way. You know, Fortune 500 companies love them, right? They could just say they're doing something without doing something. So Cranley's vote doesn't surprise me. I think all fair. I think you're spot on, right? Because I did ask her the question. Yeah. It seemed to, I won't say stumble, but it didn't seem there was a lot there to say yet. And some more decisions yeah. that had to be made. I think so. And so I think it's a good idea. The thing I love about her is, you know, she, she if I was a city council woman, I'd be her. Like, I feel like she has a heart for the community. She's good at figuring out the issues and what needs to to happen. I just wish we had more like her on city council to help her flesh out some of these ideas and turn them into to action items. Um, I don't think that she has. Um, I think she's she's out of their league. I really do. I'm just going to say it. I feel like Tamaya Denard is, is out of their league with, with, with some of the other members of city council, and they all vote the same, but when it comes to implementation, or I just think she's out of their league. So we'll see what happens. So I didn't really have much today. Just, you know, my thoughts on that and to say that I, I love the fact that you actually played the city council meeting so we can hear for ourselves what was going on. And surprise, for Chris Miverman, can you tell me what that was about? Like, I couldn't believe that he voted, you know, with Tamaya Denard to pull the money from United Way. I'm like, is he feeling okay? Is he ill? Well, she said that all of the black members of city council across, what, you got Democrat, Independent. She said she thought Jeff Pastor would probably be on the side, but he wasn't there, voted for this. But I thought that was interesting. And I'm like, why wasn't he there? Like, like I don't understand. And that's the type of stuff where I'm like, I'm not a politician. But for me, I feel like if I'm trying to get something done, you kind of go around. I used, you know, I'm a, I'm a political science major. And I used to be a lobbyist at the state house in Illinois. You would go around before you're passing something to see who's with you, who's against, and who's showing up. So if one of your key voters couldn't make it, I don't even know why he was on the floor. Like, I would have waited. I don't. I didn't understand that year. I wish we could have asked you, but I didn't think about the question until it was too late. But I wanted to know, like, if, if you know, he was for it, but he couldn't make it. Was there a reason? Did it have to go on the floor today? Like, I don't know what the rules are. Could they not have waited to a different day to bring it up when all your base is, is, is there to vote yes? So I didn't understand that either. But I don't understand city politics, so maybe there's some sort of rule where they couldn't wait. I don't know. Neither do I. But that was my thought. All right, Donnie so, B. Always a pleasure talking to you guys. I'm listening. Y'all have a great day. Absolutely. That's Donnie B, everybody. Is it just me podcast? Appreciate her insight. And uh, I think she makes a good point. Yeah, you know, city council should make sure they get the infrastructure in place, the plan in place, how it's going to work before they change it. But I just love the fact that there's a, a challenge to the status quo. Um, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm getting your text me- message right now, Anthony. Okay, okay, I got you. I think I understand. I got it. Uh, what do you think? 513-873-7134. Somebody posted this for precinct election officials. This is Terrence Gragston. Attention voters, we are hiring. Uh, November 5th election earned $181.51, including training. Monday set up an election day. Requirements, registered and active voter, no felony convictions, independent transportation. High school seniors can also work the polls. Uh, you can call right now. Democrats, 632-7041. Republicans, 632-7042. What about working the polls, the precincts? Okay, so before she called in, we were talking about Iyanla, and she says that the little brother set an example of righteousness. And maybe she's right about that. Maybe she's right about that. But 
I don't see her setting an example of righteousness on her show. She be going off on people. I mean, she be coming for the jugular and she be going hard. I don't see that same righteousness. I'm sorry. But I mean, I, I guess that's what, I guess that's the right thing to say, right? The right thing to say. Have a great and powerful Thursday. We'll catch up again tomorrow morning, bright and early at 8 a.m. I am chasing a conversation with Alicia Murphy. It could happen within the next 24 hours and or it could happen on Monday. All right, have an excellent day and we will talk real soon. Thank you.